these other countries where, and no offense, they're basically taking a straight line and they're putting it across the head. So if we could just talk a little bit about the branding and implanting and also hairline design, which I think is probably more important than... Don't buy wigs that come off at the wrong time. Maury's wigs don't come off! A question I think that would help yes. a lot of people since it's 2024 and things are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. If we had to compartmentalize yes. regarding a pharmaceutical uh -huh. or medicinal regimen yes. that you would say, hey, you know what? This is where we're at now because mm -hmm. this is... I need this information, very important. Yes, yes. What would you say, this is what I, this is what I want you to do mm -hmm. to maintain mm -hmm. the hair that you have? Okay, yes. Um, I'm going to talk about um, um, a most common cause of hair loss. It's from a genetic hair loss patient first. Okay, so nowadays we also have medicine to uh, like to slow down the process of hair loss by a genetic determination. And secondly, we also have uh, some, um, you know, like a support treatment, for example, the light therapy, or we also call it a biostimulator, okay? And uh, the other thing is um, the, um, like, cells therapy or a regenerative medicines, for example, a PRP. As you know that nowadays, we do a lot of PRP in the, like, almost every clinic. Uh -huh. And a part of that is a, a kind of uh, some new pharmaceuticals. So um, I'm starting with the medicine first. Uh, we have been using long time with the DHT blocker or anti uh, anti DHT. Uh -huh. So people know about the masteride. How now? However, nowadays we are going to add up more of uh, the tasteride. The tasteride is like a um, higher generation of uh, DHT blocker because the tasteride can work on two sides of the enzymes blocker. Uh -huh. So now we add on the tasteride and tasteride can also have a form of uh, oral injection or you can have a topical, but topical is very hard to find. I, I think in some part of the United States if you can find it. And the other thing is the mesotherapy with the tasteride is to inject it directly into your scalp here. So uh, what's good about topical and injection is the dutasteride probably cause you more side effects. It's mm -hmm. like finasteride, you take it uh, orally and you, you also have some systemic side effects but people don't like it. For mm -hmm. example, the sexual diminish, uh, for example, mood diminish or something. And dutasteride probably cause you more side effects. So uh, we can also use it like a topical form. And uh, finasteride nowadays, uh, you know, standard dose from USFDA is one milligram per day. However, nowadays we try to get more of the topical, topical mm. form of finasteride. So it would like to uh, have a anti-EDHT effect. However, without um, systemic side. So, so uh, you know, things things happen in trends. Like yes. the, the the normal trending. I've been doing this a long time. Is that it initially started out as Ativar or Dutasteride. Right. This is what I first, this is what we're going back almost 20 years ago. Uh -huh. I've been fighting this battle. Uh -huh. So then it moved to Finasteride. Now I see that what's reemerging is the Dutasteride. Yes. So obviously the reason why people stayed away from Dutasteride mm -hmm. was just like you said with the sexual side effects. Yes. So now if we had to administer like uh, the protocol uh -huh. Is it one milligram divided mm -hmm. per week, like a 0.5 and a 0.5 mm -hmm. regarding the tasteride? Is uh, that how you would, you know, give me the formula? Okay, um, the formula of the tasteride is not really in uh, no uh, 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 full consensus. Right. Uh huh. So, but nowadays, doctor would like to give like 0.5 milligrams per day, but somehow they would like to to just add. Initially, yeah, you probably just take one or two tablets a week, okay. and you can also increase the dose until you know you reach the maximum point or point five milligrams per day. Okay, so yeah. it's actually the frequency would be yeah. a daily point five. Right, okay. daily point five milligrams, uh -huh. and then you observe about the side effects as well. 
However, the alternative way, as I said, is the is like a topical form or injection form. So now, does it ever come to the point where you have a patient that you give them dutasteride and finasteride as uh, part of a protocol? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. My protocol is like if you have one milligram finasteride and you don't see, um, you know, more effect of uh, finasteride anymore, I, I add on dutasteride, maybe one or two tablets a week. Okay. Okay. Until, until we get the maximum result without systemic side effects. So now, if we had to go over, you know, oral compounds. Yes. What also may, and now this is in certain regions, mm -hmm. you have oral minoxidil. Yes. Which yes. usually, depending on the country, comes in five milligrams, yes. or I believe in the United States, it's a 2.5 milligrams. So now, mm -hmm. if we had to say, well, like a, if, I'm a, if I'm a follicular warrior, meaning that uh -huh. my hair, there's a lot of reasons why it's falling out. Mm -hmm. So we would have the finasteride, dutasteride, now, regarding the minoxidil, how would we implement that? Okay, um, what I uh, really suggest the patients to do is the oral minoxidil and topical finasteride. Now, they, um, the trend is, uh, you know, going uh, conversely yes. to the past. Um, mm -hmm. US FDA approved uh, minoxidil as a topical form mm -hmm. at 2% for ladies and 5% for gentlemen. Yes. However, uh, because we have uh, a lot more data, a lot more research about minoxidil, that we uh, have seen that the minoxidil works better if you take it oral. Okay. Yeah. So, but met metabolism of minoxidil in the body can help you work, you know, with the hair loss better. Uh, so nowadays, a recommendation dose for minoxidil for men is 1.25 mm -hmm. to 2.5 milligrams per day. Or you can reach up to like five milligrams in some, you know, some uh, special cases. But then also the yeah. the the profile, the safety profile, yes. with five milligrams, you know, regarding the kidneys, right. you would have to, you know, check your GFR and do your uh, blood yes. work, right? Yes, yes, yes. For five milligrams, you need to be aware of some puffiness. This is this is salt retaining. I want to look. I want to look like a werewolf. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. and so, thirty percent. Uh, the side effects of minoxidil is about uh, the hair mm. hypertrichosis or uh, hairy body. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, so that we have to be careful when prescribed to ladies, because you, uh, for the ladies, you probably have a lot more hair, especially mm. the beard area. Right. <laughs> Women do like sex. it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So now there's other ancillary drugs like. Uh, biotin, mm -hmm. there's other vitamins like hair, yes. skin, and nails. Is there anything that you would say, because obviously as we start to put this cocktail together, mm -hmm. we have a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So is there any value in mm -hmm. anything else like vitamins, minerals? Uh, yes, yes. And nowadays we are talking about more of, uh, vitamin supplements. Mm -hmm. Vitamin B from B1 to B12, they are all essential for uh, hair regrowth. And vitamin A, vitamin D, E, K, all of this, uh -huh. especially vitamin D. I think uh, world's population right now, we are lack of vitamin D because we are we going out uh, too less. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have much of the outdoor activities. True. Yeah, and most people work in the office, we don't expose to the sun. So um, most people now uh, lack of vitamin D, and vitamin D can be uh, a very essential vitamin for the hair growth. Now, what's also interesting that you brought that up is that in certain regions, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, I, you know, I'm a nomadic traveler, yes. is that there's an injectable vitamin yes. D that I've yes. used in this country, also mm -hmm. when I was in the Middle East. So, uh -huh. would you say that if we had to, like, once again, enhance this cocktail? Mm -hmm. We have the vitamin B, the yes. vitamin D shots, vitamin shots. Yeah, vitamin D. You can also have shots or supplements. supplements. It depends on the level of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So to be clear, you probably need to extract your blood and do the, some tests of the vitamin D level. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if the vitamin D is very low in your blood level, we probably consider about injection. Injection is intramuscular injection, and the, uh, the, the level of vitamin D can be stable until nine months. Okay. However, uh, the risk of uh, injection is if you have a toxic 
level of vitamin D, you cannot you cannot run away from this because it's already so, infected so we your do, body. So we do the lab work first yes, and then see? Yes, we do the lab work first, okay. yes, yes, before our prescription of vitamin D. So when you do the lab work, the, uh, the doctors can uh, you know decide uh, what what type of vitamin D supplement that is good for you. You probably just only oral tablet is fine, mm -hmm. or you probably need to uh, inject you know what it is is that I know you're an expert you know mm -hmm. regarding your surgical ability but there's so much information that's out there yeah. so what I like to do is I like to get I'm a very detailed person mm -hmm. I like to get granular because even for myself and whoever you know follows you follows mm -hmm. me could at least have the right current information mm -hmm. so now so now regarding these the low light therapy, we got the PRP, the mesotherapy. Yes. If there was like a, because things cost money. Mm -hmm. I'm all, you know, I, mm -hmm. I always talk about how much things cost. Yes. So if we had to say PRP, laser therapy, mm -hmm. mesotherapy, mm -hmm. what, what's like, what's the most efficacious or most like beneficial for oh. someone like me, let's say. Okay. So um, the one that is uh, a standard or US FDA approved for the effect effectiveness is uh, the light therapy and monoxyl and finasteride. There's only three treatment options. Uh, um, the, uh, another options like PRP or cells or blah, 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 is just like alternatives, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to just you know, focus on what works, I recommend monoxyl, finasteride and light therapy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if we had a because one of it's it's not necessarily a hobby. It's just what I've been doing for a long time. Is that I'm almost fifty years old and I'm mm -hmm. trying to slow things down and trying mm -hmm. to be as youthful as possible. Mm -hmm. So a lot of places that I go, they try to push the mesenchymal stem cells mm -hmm. either from adipose mm -hmm. tissue or yes. from the umbilical cords, which once again contingent on the region. Yes. You know, it's either they're, you know, it's, uh, how can I say, uh, approved or it's, mm -hmm. they're not even looking at, you know, to, mm -hmm. to entertain anything. So uh -huh. if we had a talk, obviously it's depending on the country, it's not approved, mm -hmm. but what's the effectiveness of stem cells? Okay. Um, nowadays, um, in the U.S. or in even in Thailand, we, we don't regard the cell therapy or regenerative medicine as the standard protocol. Mm -hmm. No, this is the alternative or complementary medicine, uh, right for now. So you have a lot of data, a lot of research uh, that can tell that um, cells does work mm -hmm. and a lot of research that s says uh, cells does not really work. So now, there is no like you know um, a very strong evidence that the cell will be effective or cause effectiveness. So, um, but in general, by theory, everything all good. Everything. Yes. Yes. Because what I don't want to personally, and I don't want to run into it, and whoever receives the information right. is that uh, where I come from, they call a snake oil salesman. It's just like, <laughs> well, yeah, use this and use that, and by that time. You're already in it for you know tens of thousands of dollars because yeah. you know when a patient comes in, there's a level of desperation. Like yeah. I'm losing my hair. I mean, yeah. I look to, I look older. So I figure if someone is going to go down this path, mm -hmm. that at least they should have the right information. Right. Uh, so yeah, I always talk to the patients that the cell therapy or regenerative medicines is not a standard treatment at all. So if you want to try, you know, I probably select the one that is not dangerous. For example, use your own cells, not any other body cells, something like that. It's just like a try. It's still in on a try now. Yeah. So if we, if we had to switch gears, because um, I, I know that you are a legitimate artist mm -hmm. and I, you know, I always praise that it's one case a day mm -hmm. regarding when you come in and get surgery here. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel like the industry would, mm -hmm. they do a little bit of branding, like, oh, we're doing, you know, the diamond implant or this, you know, like, like what's, you know, I'm, it's sometimes it's hard to get to yeah. the truth. Mm -hmm. So what's the truth behind the incisions, the implant? It's probably a very large question I'm asking you, mm -hmm. but if you had a, maybe give me a general answer on maybe because what I see and we talk about hairline design mm -hmm. 
and you you know you always give me the irregularities and you make me look natural and i appreciate that but i i, I see these other countries where and no offense they're basically taking a straight line mm -hmm. and they're putting it across the head so if we could just talk a little bit about the branding and implanting and also hairline design which i think is probably more important than if it's a sapphire or a, a lion implanter, et cetera. So what, what, what do we think here? Uh, yeah, very difficult to but say. Big, big it's question. A, right? Yes, big, big question, because it's a lot deep in details, you know. Okay. Um, firstly, uh, in this industry, you can see that some, they say they're, they're talking about like, uh, they're going like, uh, what can I say? In a direction. Yeah. and. This is the, like the artworks. I think is a kind of art uh, that you have to use your design, mm -hmm. your brain, your perception of beauty, and it is also the art designs because you have to get into it. You have to use your skill, the hand skill, and blah blah blah. So I think uh, for me, um, I'm, I'm not talking about any other doctors. Okay, yeah. For for me, I think it is still an artwork. So every patient is like a piece of art, but we use the art all together along with the science, mm -hmm. the medicine, the science. Sometimes uh, uh, we, uh, the, the patient, you know, uh, in each individual case uh, is different. Uh, they probably like to have the hairline like this. Mm. Some, some, like what, what I yeah. bought in Colin Farrell's Widow Peak. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, you prefer right. something like this, sure. but however, some people they just don't mind. Uh -huh. They probably have a perception of uh, some celebrity in the Hollywood or mm -hmm. some fake, you know, right, right, right. artificial hair. But they, they probably they, they think it's good. Yeah. So this is a uh, very difficult. So, but however, we talk to the patient, uh, we make an agreement with the patient that how would you want to be looked like, mm -hmm. and what is my opinion about this. And we need to talk and, you know, come in like... Come to an agreement. Yes, if you manage, yes, compromise. Because if the, the hairline, if the patient wants the hairline that is too unnatural, I would say no. You have to. That, ethic, yeah, yes. yeah, because, yeah, about ethic and secondly, you know, it's just like my trademark is on your face. <laughs> right, right, right. If you go and, and you said, oh, when, when did you have it done? Oh, with the black look on, but it's a fake hairline. I, mm -hmm. I don't... So I'll, I'll, I'll give you one one last question, and it, it's a, it'll be an easier one. What do you think about these mass surgeries, meaning that they're mm -hmm. harvesting, yeah. you know, anywhere from 5,000 to, you know, I've seen 10,000, because I, I follow this, it's like my hobby. And so what are some of the pitfalls there? If like, mm -hmm. if, let's say if you were, you were co-signing that kind of idea, mm -hmm. we're going to come in, 10,000 grafts, you're good. What's the dilemma mm. with doing such a mass surgery like that? Yeah, um, I would say, um, you know, I know some doctors that he he had like 7,000 or 8,000 in a session and a very good outcome. And I know Sounds that... Sounds like a long day for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but not, <laughs> not for me. Uh, no, I know. Yeah, I have my limitations. So individual... Each doctor, they have a capability. They're probably like a fast worker, you know, they will have a very precise and very uh, good hand skills. They probably can do it fast. And the patience of him has a big area and have a big hair. Mm -hmm. For example, people from uh, the Western country, they have, <laughs> yes. yeah, you, you, you have large- Tremendous. Hair. Yes, yes, you have like a garden with full of plants. But if you look back to Asian people, you don't have that much. Mm. Uh huh. And even the African people, they have less density than Asian. So I think each doctors they have the field that they have practice, and they have tools, and they have like assistants or whatever. So everybody has like a different. So, so you're different. saying that it is possible that a large surgery can be done, but if we have to look towards yeah. the future, because yeah. like you told me hair loss is something that will probably keep happening. So now if we deplete 
Yeah. These these donor areas. What right. what is what's the result? You know. What I try to say is yes, the large session is possible. However, I don't want everyone to focus on the numbers. Number is not the first thing that you need to do. You you focus on. I think the quality of graph, you know, survival rate. How you do it is like this is like a, a first line that we should look for. Uh -huh. I don't say that the large number is always bad. Right. You know, the average for me, I have like 3,000 to, to 4,000 for a few in a time. This is my, um, my considering that my good work. Right. Okay, but some doctors, they pro probably they can do much. But, but I don't want everybody to focus on numbers. <laughs> no, but, but what's interesting that you say, and I, I, the, the main thing that I speak about since this is number seven for me is that yes, yes. as in, as important as you are, mm -hmm. you know, you're the overseer of the operation, mm -hmm. but you would have to consider yes. the human being, your technicians. So yes. now hours and hours and yes. hours. Yes. Of, so you would have to say after a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. there's going to be mistakes. Right. You know, right. so obviously once you take, you know, a graft out, you know, you're running the risk of it not being a successful surgery. Yeah, right. yeah. I think the number that is, you know, quite safe and fit to the to the facilities is, is the best. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything that you want to, <laughs> you know, talk about before we go? Anything you want to plug? Anything you have, you know? I, yes. I think hair transplantation is, uh, is on demand. Because uh, people, you know, they just take care of themselves um, and they just uh, want to look good. You know, nowadays we have a lot of uh, like interactive, uh, like see the video and you do the YouTube and you do a lot of things. Social media yeah, rules. Social media <laughs> and even the business. It's just like everything is in our uh, daily lives already. So people want to look good and hair is like one thing that people want to grab it. So I, so yeah, so you can have a uh, very um, many options of the hair restorations, such medicines. Uh, the point is you need to go to the, the doctors that, you know, um, devote themselves <laughs> for this one. A, a dedicated Yes, one dedicate, yeah, dedicate themselves to this field. To, to, you know, to the hair, to the everything for hair. You're a specialist. Yes, yes, yes. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. Uh, once again, thanks for great work. And I know that uh, I'm going to look uh, very Hollywood as soon as this grows up. Okay? <laughs> you already look good. Okay, okay. 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 okay.